son of David. Bless he that cometh in the name of God. Sing a Hosanna in the highest. Sing Hosanna to the Lord. Sing a Hosanna in the highest. Sing Hosanna to the Lord. Sing a Hosanna, sing a Hosanna. those of you who are physically here and those of you who are watching online. <clears throat> I'm going to read from Rays of the One Light, and these are parallel passages from the Bhagavad Gita and the Bible. <clears throat> <clears throat> and this is entitled, it's for Palm Sunday, especially for today. And it's entitled, Who is this Son of Man? Truth is one and eternal. Realize oneness with it in your deathless self within. The following commentary is based on the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. On Palm Sunday, the throng joyfully acclaimed Jesus Christ as he entered Jerusalem casting palm fronds before him and singing, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord bless the King of Israel. Jesus Christ had told the people, the Son of Man must be lifted up. His reference, so we are told, was to the mode of his impending crucifixion. Some persons on that occasion had asked, who is this Son of Man? Was Jesus a human being merely? Those who on Palm Sunday called him king little realized the actual nature of his kingdom. He was far more than what they imagined. Yes, of course, he ate, drank, walked, slept, and talked like others. His consciousness, however, was centered in infinity. Yes, again, he laughed, like others, but his laughter expressed divine joy, not mere merriment. Again, he wept like them, but never with human grief. The tears he shed were for the sufferings of unenlightened human beings. Never were they shed in self-pity. Jesus Christ was wakeful in God. Most people, by contrast, are asleep spiritually. How strange to reflect that less than a week from that entry into Jerusalem, so joyfully acclaimed, he would be arrested condemned, and crucified. Such is the bitter sweetness of human existence. <clears throat> Smiles of welcome one day, insults, even persecution, the next. How few realize that Christ's suffering would not be for himself, but for people's ignorance, for those who had not yet understood the deeper reality 
that dwelt also in them. Everyone is born trailing clouds of glory, as the poet Wordsworth put it. Even the meanest beggar has lived a story or will eventually have lived it more magnificent than the greatest epic ever written. In the Bhagavad Gita, this dichotomy between the Son of Man and the inner Son of God is beautifully described. Sri Krishna, representing God in human form, reveals his true nature in infinity. In the 11th chapter of that great scripture, his chief disciple Arjuna exclaims, O infinite light, thy radiance spreading o'er the universe shines into the very darkest abyss. Thy voice overwhelms the roar of cosmic cataclysms. Lo, the myriad stars are thy diadem. Thy scepter radiates power everywhere. O immortal Brahman, Lord of all, again and again at thy feet of infinity, I lie in prostration before thee. Thus, through Holy Scripture, God has spoken to mankind. So I would also like to welcome all of you, uh, whether visitors for the first time or came by for tulips and got Palm Sunday. Uh, I'd like to read from Whispers from Eternity. Um, this is a book that Paramahansa Yogananda wrote. And uh, this passage is, Teach me not to be deceived by the senses. O oh, divine teacher, train me to recognize the difference between my soul's lasting happiness and the passing pleasures of the senses. Keep my eyes open, that I be not deceived by my senses, decked out as they are in stolen royal trappings and in the mirage cloak of false happiness, as, thus disguised, they try to enter the mansion of my life. Discipline my unwise, wayward senses, that my pleasures be spiritualized, and that I look ever beyond the illusion of glittering visible forms to find divine joy hidden, simply dressed in the white robe of humility. So Palm Sunday is uh, a wonderful celebration in the Christian world. And I wanted to share a little of Paramahansa Yogananda's understanding of what Palm Sunday represents. Uh, one of the aphorisms, we could say, that Swami Kriyananda repeated to us often was that Christ did not come to show how great he was. He came to show how great we could be if we attuned to his consciousness. And I'd like to look at Palm Sunday and Holy Week and even I'll verge into Easter a little bit. Uh, because Yogananda saw the spiritual path from the viewpoint of a master, as Christ did. And they saw the opportunity we have to be like Christ. Now, that's a really tall order when looked at from the ego. But looked at from the soul, it's not so bad. <laughs> the chant that we did, I am nameless, I am free, in myself I am free, is the key for us to understand Christ's consciousness. Christ went through the week, Palm Sunday and Holy Thursday and the Last Supper and 
then the trial and crucifixion and the resurrection with that consciousness of the master. All masters of all time live in that consciousness. If we want to be like Christ, which uh, admittedly is a tall order when we begin to look at it, we can do it. But what we need to do is to lift up the Son of Man, lift up our consciousness to the point between the eyebrows, to that level of our consciousness where we are light, where we are own. Jesus is riding the donkey. Everyone's singing. They're not singing as good as this choir did, but they're, they're, they're practicing. You know, it's 2,000 years ago. They're just getting the rhythm of a song, but they're, they're getting into it, and they're singing. And some not so much into it. Others really into it, really singing. What's Christ hearing? He's hearing the song of the heart. He's hearing those disi disciples in that crowd chanting Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna to the Christ consciousness. They're calling out for that. And some are a little less sold on it, right? Okay. But, but Christ doesn't have an ego, so he's not reacting to that. He's reacting to whatever devotion the disciple can bring. And he's hearing that. Master said God, Yogananda said God watches the heart. That's what Christ is listening to. He's listening to the song. He's listening to Hosanna. And he's accepting that. And if we want to be like Christ, we have to train ourselves to listen to the good parts of the music, not to the bad parts. Christ is in Om on the donkey. He hears the Om. He's in the Om. He is the Om. And he's hearing the music. And the masters just filter out the Maya. And they listen to the best that we have to offer. God takes whatever leaf or flower. Remember Krishna says a leaf or flower? That's all I have. I have one leaf. It's wilted. And the master says, good. There's devotion. God watches the heart. So Christ is listening to the song of humanity. But he's conscious. The Christ conscious within you is aware of the duality. What we have to do to be like Christ is we have to step out of the duality. We have to lift up the Son of Man and live up here, live in light. That's what Master saw. That's what Master heard. That's what the Buddha saw. Mary, the mother of Christ, Nanda Moi Ma, name all the saints you know. They're listening to the same soundtrack that we're listening to, but they're concentrating on the devotion, the light, the joy, the beauty, the love. That's the realm that they're looking at because that's directionally where we're going. We're not going downhill into the bad stuff. The bad stuff's going to come. It's going to be there. Maya is a constant. We're, what are we, 2,000 years removed from Jesus going into Jerusalem? What's the Middle East like right now? What's Jerusalem doing right now? Golan Heights here at West Bank. We've got same stuff. Maya is a very boring, long movie. And Christ's consciousness <laughs> is the antidote. We have to go there. How do we go there? We meditate. We have to take a little bit of time. You're not going to get free of Maya by trying to smooth it out, paint it over, you know, kind of sand it down. That's not going to work. You've got to go into that Christ consciousness. I am nameless. I am free in myself, ever free. Go into that consciousness of when you meditate, whenever you meditate, but try to meditate every day. Because Maya is persistent. You know, if nothing else, it's persistent and it's always trying to pull us down to a lower level. And the Christ consciousness is beckoning us both on Good Friday and on Easter Sunday and on Palm Sunday and on. Uh, Holy Thursday at the dinner, Christ consciousness is beckoning us calmly, lovingly to come and dine with me, be with me, be in that consciousness. Make meditation a daily practice. Make it twice a day practice at least and try to go as deeply as you can in thy light of mellow joy, you know, tranquil, unbroken thrill. That's the goal. 
As long as you can be in that tranquil, unbroken thrill, maybe it's for a few minutes. Use the techniques your guru's given us, given you. If you're a disciple of Yogananda, use the techniques. Hong Sa, Om, Kriya. If you're a disciple of the Buddha, use the mantra, Om Mani Padme Hum. If you're a Christian, pray with Christ. But go into that space where the maya, where the screaming, where the bitterness, where the jealousy, it's all there. Don't concentrate on it. Don't drop your mind down to it. Bring your mind up with the Christ. Christ rode on the donkey in joy. They're throwing palm fronds. They're singing a song. They're worshiping. Good. That's wonderful. One time, a Saint Neem Kroli Baba was a contemporary of all of ours. He lived in the, well, he wasn't a contemporary of all of ours because the summer you were very young. <laughs> but uh, anyway, they, the disciples asked Neem Kroli Baba, they said, what was Christ's consciousness like? He just stayed, stopped for a minute. Tears started coming out of his eyes. And he said, so much love. So much love. That's the Christ consciousness. Go there. Be with Christ. Meditate. Listen to the Om. Blessed he that comes in the name of God. What's the name of God? Om. Who comes in the name of God? Everyone comes in the name of God. You're all blessed. We're all blessed. We're all children of God. We're like Christ. That's what Yogananda said. Christ didn't come to show us he's great, we're not. He came to show us we are all like Christ. We have that potential. And Christ showed us, live like this. Live at the point between the eyebrows. And Christ gave us a mantra. Friday. He's on the cross. He's already had betrayed by Judas for 30 pieces of silver. One of the 12. This is the inner circle. 30, 30 pieces of silver betrays Jesus. It's got to be disappointing. You know? And then Peter. Peter, he says, Christ says to Peter, he goes, you know, before the cock crows two times, you're going to deny three times you ever know me. And Peter's like, no way. I'm Peter. I'm, I'm the rock. Remember all that stuff? <laughs> no. He forgets. Jesus says, it's okay. What does Jesus say to him then? He says, it's okay, Peter. I've prayed for you. I love you. I'm with you. You are the Christ consciousness. You're just going to make a mistake. And it's no big deal. We all, all humans make mistakes. So he goes through that. He has dinner. He tells Judas, that which you must do, go do it quickly. Go betray me quickly. But it was with forgiveness and love. He has no judgment. Christ has no judgment. He has no ego. So he's not reacting to all this. And then he has a trial. Caiaphas double crosses him. The Sanhedrin double crosses him. He goes on the cross. He, they're torturing him. And what does he say? Master said that, Master, that Ma Yogananda said that Christ's greatest miracle was on the cross. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And that's the mantra he gave us. And we can use it. You can go through your life realizing, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. It's compassion. They're caught in Maya. Oh, well. Too bad. No, no sense of this is happening to me. That's where Christ showed us what we can be. Is get rid of the ego. Don't attach everything to yourself. It's just Maya. It's just happening. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. This is really a valuable mantra. I mean, just think of all the places you can use this. I mean, you've got teenage kids. You've got an ex-wife. You've got all sorts of problems. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They don't realize, Father. So please help them, Father. Help them come up to the Christ consciousness. Help them come up to Hosanna. Help them come up to joy to worship, to realization of the beauty of this creation, of the disciples who do love God. And Christ knew that the 12 loved him. He knew that they'd scatter. He predicted, you're all going to disappear. But when does he come back? On Sunday, Easter, he comes when they're all together, and he says, peace I give to you. It's just a dream. Live in God. And then he tells Thomas, put your fingers in the nail holes. Because he's doubting Thomas. <laughs> he's got this doubt thing. Everybody has one thing. We were with Swami Kriyananda once, and he, 
he was musing about the disciples. He said, it's amazing how many people have just one screw loose. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's real. And that, that was us. I mean, the Sangha. You know, we've all got one screw loose. But to the master, to the saints, it's just one screw loose. We're going to fix that screw and you're good. You're good. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. There's no ego in it. And we've got to live like that if we want to live like Christ. That's, that's Christ on Palm Sunday. He's rejoicing because they're rejoicing. On Thursday, he's having dinner with them, with the disciples. And okay, Judas has to betray the Christ. Okay, go what you have to do. Go do quickly. Good, good, good. And then on Easter, he's resurrected and he's showing us we're resurrected. We're that Christ consciousness. We have to practice it. And don't let yourself get away. That's why I recommend that you meditate twice a day at least. Because Maya is going to, you're going to leave meditation. And by about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you're going to forget you were ever there some days. <laughs> it's just like so foreign. It's horrible. This is happening. And oh, my, I'm being audited and my taxes. And oh, you know, om, 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 om. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And there's a little change or an addition to that mantra. It's a wonderful mantra. I'm not trying to improve on Christ's work. But you can also say, Father, forgive me. I didn't know what I was doing. I made a horrible mistake. It's uh, in the law, it's not guilty by reason of insanity. <laughs> it's a really good defense. You know, you should pull it out whenever you screw up. You just go and say, Father, I, Guruji and Master Zer. One of the disciples came up to Yogananda. He said, you will forgive me, Master. Master said, what else can I do? He's the guru. We have to understand that Christ had nothing but compassion. He's on the cross. All this has happened. And his prayer is, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. It's, it's not, Maya is not the ultimate reality. The light of Christ is the ultimate reality. Let us live that. Let us sing Hosanna. You can sing this song all week if you want. Next week is Easter. And what is the song for Easter? Christ is risen this Easter morn to, our, to his life to, to, in his joy, our lives are born. This, this is the reality. Is the risen Christ is the reality. The risen Christ consciousness lifted up the Son of Man from the base, from the ego, from, oh, poor me, to, no, the stone rolls away. I am light. I own nothing. I am free. In myself, I am free. And live in that love. Live in that joy. Because that's the reality. The Maya is not the reality. If Jesus didn't rise on Sunday, we'd have to debate it. He rose. He rolled that rock away. And he lives in that. And then, and I thought about this, why didn't we have Palm Sunday the week after Easter and everyone just celebrate, hey, Jesus rose from the dead? That's not how he did it, huh? He did it before. After Christ rose, he appeared to the 12. But then who did he appear to for 40 days? The disciples the close disciples, in little ones and twos. He went with this, he, he came over to Hashi's house and had tea with her. And, and then he went over here and he worked Bhagavati on practicing this song. And just with a couple. Why? Because the Christ consciousness, it's harder to find. The Maya is actively trying to confuse us and to pull us away from that reality. It's a conscious force. So meditate on the light. Go deep in the sound. Try and relax the body. And try when you meditate to dissolve everything in the outside world. All the senses, all your problems. That's, you know, that's why we take off our shoes when we come in the temple. You take the, the, attack, the touching, you touch the earth with your shoes. You leave the shoes outside the temple. In the temple, you go into that mellow light of joy. You live in that joy. Because it's Palm Sunday, we're in a festive mood. Let's see if I can find... A second whispers from eternity. I'd like to read and close with prayers on the beads of love. I tell my prayers on the beads of love strung with my devotion. I direct them beyond all names, God, Spirit, Brahma, Christ, Shankara, Krishna, Buddha, Mohammed, for all names are thine, and I shun no name, 
For I know thou dwellest in all forms. In thy cosmic dramas on the stage of time, and in thy myriad acting roles, thou hast assumed innumerable names. Behind them all, too, I know thy one changeless name, eternal, conscious, self-existent bliss. Many times I have played with thee, many songs of thine have I sung. On the ocean bosom of thy eternal life, I've been nurtured by thee as a tiny drop of life. I remember thy warm touch through the centuries, whenever feeling the chill of separation, I turned homeward to thee. Again, in this daylight of remembrance, let me play with thee, let me sing thy songs. Thank you. 